let's go what color i charged it i charged it today yesterday i wish it would just stay pink purple's okay too Hey, hello, I'm Julie Jo. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. You can hit the subscribe button if you'd like to, just to subscribe. Words, words are hard today. You can hit the bell button if you'd like to get notified when I post and you can hit the like button if you like this video. If you're not new, welcome back. I'm doing something a little different today and I'm excited because this is about Arbon. If you didn't know, I was an Arbon and I was qualified for the top 2% of the company before I left Arbon. So today we're going to do a reaction and commentary to a Skills Sunday training video. These we used to have almost every Sunday in the evening. I think it was like 8 p.m. and this was done by my Uplines Upline and she's the number one income earner in Arbonne. Today we're going to be reacting to someone named Nicole Polson. She's a public figure so it's fine and I'm putting commentary to it so this isn't illegal Nicole. I have wanted to start talking more about Arbonne and getting more into that so I thought this might be a good way to do it. Oh, I'm, I'm really excited um, just because I feel like I know so much more about Arbonne than I do any other company, obviously, because I've experienced it. And uh, oh, don't forget to follow my social media. I am on Instagram and I'm on TikTok at walkin underscore on underscore Lexapro. There you're going to see more everyday anti-MLM, anti-scam content, uh, and more personal posts. So I think that we should just jump into it. Grab a snack, grab a drink, let's go. Okay, so it's eight o'clock. We'll go ahead and get started. I hope everybody's on. I am so excited to get to speak to all of you tonight. This is so awesome. Um, I'm truly honored to get to speak to such an amazing group of women so, and men. So um, if you do not know me, my name is Nicole Polson, and I'm a two-wide executive national vice president and independent consultant with Arbonne. I'm 27 years old. I'm from Southern Oklahoma. I'm married to my high school sweetheart. And Just for the record, when they say I'm a two-wide blank, 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 um, they usually use it in the phrase of executive national vice president. Two wide means you have two other national vice presidents uh, underneath you, essentially. And executive with anything, with district manager, with area manager, regional vice president, or national vice president, those are the four levels. When you put an E in front, that just means someone on your team below you has reached the level that you're at. And together, we have two beautiful baby girls, Lily and Lila. If you follow me on Instagram, you know that I overshare so much about them. Lily is four and Lala is three and a half months. So um, we have a lot going on here at our house. So you may also know that I own the Pink Door Boutique in Durant, Oklahoma, and we have an online store, shoppinkdoorboutique.com. And our store will actually be eight years old tomorrow. So um, that's a really, this is like a really, really exciting time. So um, two really big days back to back. So um, whenever I was, you know, first told about Arbonne, my immediate, I mean, my very immediate reaction was just that I wanted nothing to do with it. You know, I would use the products, I decided to use the products, but I was like, I have way too much on my plate already. And that was before I even had one baby. Um, I just, I didn't see it as, I didn't see that it would be a good fit for me because I had my own business at a young age and that was a lot on my plate and I had just gotten married and so I remember turning it down I actually turned Arbon down for three years so it's okay when people are telling you no because they may come back around one day and become an MVP so and that is why people don't stop reaching out to you that is why when you say no they don't take it as no because of People say this all the time, and I've heard it multiple times in Arbonne, and I'm sure in a ton of other multi-level marketing companies, no means not right now. That's what no means to them. And just like she said, they always use this example too. I have a hard time believing people when they say, I said no for blank, blank years, and now I'm at the top. Because a lot of times they'll just use that to say, hey, anyone 
can go to the top. Like anyone can get on your team and move up, whether they're saying no now, whether they're a hater now or not. Like if I can, they can, which is not true. Um, Brittany and Nicole, in my opinion, are both extremely privileged in a lot of ways. And, you know, she ha already had a successful boutique before she even started Arbonne. So that likely was super helpful in how she moved up. And personally, watching her, especially her and her sister, there is a lot of things that I disagree with when it comes to them as people in general. Um, but that's besides the point, because they're huge scammers and terrible people, in my opinion. Now, you might not think they're scammers, and that's okay. I do. As someone who has watched them and seen how they've reacted to people, seen the terrible things that they said and they've done, I know a little more uh, than someone just watching this, I guess you could say. Anyway, all that to say, honestly, you ask, I and people ask me, why do they say, why do they keep reaching out to me even though I say no? This is why, because they're told to. They're told that no means not right now. It doesn't actually mean no. Um, whenever my sister, Brittany Trent, some of you may know her, so she is my sponsor. She's the most incredible leader I have ever known. Honestly, if it wasn't for her, not only would I not be here, but I mean, she just, she has truly paved the way for me and so many others. So when Brittany came to me, she kept taking all my Arbonne products from my house. Like she was constantly taking them. And Again, I was not gonna touch the business, but I was gonna use the products. So Brittany kept taking my products and using my products. And I was like, where are these going? Well, one day she said, I'm gonna start my own Arbonne business. And I, I was sitting in my living room and I looked at her and I was like, who would wanna do that? So I would wanna do that for sure. So it, it took me about- By the way, if you like look these people up, don't go and like bully them or talk to them or say anything. Um, but they are twins and they look just alike. So if you're like, wait, what, who, what? They're twins. Three weeks to decide that I would go ahead and jump in with her and just say, okay, let's, let's see if this works. And so many of us, we, we stop before we ask someone because they are busy or maybe, um, maybe you're just intimidated with a certain person. You know what? maybe that person is a no at that minute, but they're going to come around. So that's why I feel boom right there. They, they nail this in your head. That person's just a no right now. Doesn't mean no forever. It means no right now type of thing. Always. They all say this. I said this. Um, and it's such, it's such a terrible thing. I think because they are listening to their leaders saying, look, my best friend came around after many years of me asking her about it. And she jumped in and got to the top with me. Well, I mean, the downline of that person's going to go, how would my best friend do that? Your best friend is saying no, let's say their best friend's saying no. And they keep saying no. And this person keeps harassing their best friend about it. Their best friend is no longer going to be their best friend in the majority of cases. That's why a lot of people lose family and friends in this because they won't stop harassing people about it in my opinion they they won't stop they cross the line they're so manipulated and brainwashed in my opinion of course that they think that everyone's going to end up joining them which is not the truth also where they are like Oklahoma is a big Arbonne state and where they are is so saturated now so saturated with Arbonne people everywhere. So they got in before it got super saturated. I feel like it's so important not to prejudge someone, but to go ahead and share your heart with them and say, you know, I want to do this business. Do you want to do it with me? Because they may be a hard no, just like I was, but they may come around. So when Brittany, when Brittany began to start her Arbonne business, that was the same month that she was starting law school. So I was like, you know, I can do this too. So naturally, you know, as she began to do well in the business, I wanted to level up. I, I really wanted to prove to myself that I could do this, that I could make this into an incredible business. So um, I, going back to what I said earlier about having Pink Door, I opened Pink Door when I was 19. So if you don't know me, if you don't know that about my story, although I was super young, I had, I've had so much support from my family. My entire family has, I mean, made it possible for me to do that. But I have learned so much about my Arbonne business. I think 
because of being in business with Pink Door. And so the thing is, it's not the same and it's not your Arbonne business. You're a 1099 contract worker. It's not the same thing. And having a boutique like that is very likely going to get you a lot more customers than just someone who doesn't have a boutique. Boutique, not boutique, boutique. <laughs> We've talked about this, sorry everybody. For me, I learned that that's incredible to be your own boss. I was able to be my own boss from a very young age. Um, that is, I think some of us may be too bossy to have a boss and so we have no choice. So for me, I learned that if I wasn't showing up because the boss does not have to check in with anybody. The boss does not clock in. I don't go, I don't go do something for my store and write down a check mark. I don't get paid by the hour. But the thing is, if I'm not showing up, there's no business. It's not about the amount of, you know, did I, did I make it on time that day? You've got to go in early. You've got to stay late. This is your business. This is your baby. This is something that you need to, if you're passionate about this and you're wanting to share this with others, if this company has blessed you and your business has blessed you, share this with others, be passionate, wake up early, go share this. This is not a business. This is not your business. This is a contracting job with a company who has a CEO who's the boss. You can get terminated. We know that. We know people who've been terminated. This is not your business. And they, I mean, freaking nail that into your head that it's your business. It's your business. Wake up early, stay up late, blah, blah, blah. When in reality, when we look at Arbonne's disclosure statement, which I think we should just take a quick peek at, it says, let's just go over it really quick. What you need to know about joining. So what is Arbonne's business opportunity? Um, Arbonne Independent Consultants do not earn compensation for recruiting or sponsoring other Arbonne Independent Consultants. They only earn compensation when products are sold. When it comes to Arbonne, you make money off of your downline. You absolutely do. Now, if someone signs up, it actually, you do make money off of them when they sign up. In, in my opinion, because when they buy the 30 days to healthy living, if you know, because you're pushed to purchase products, when you sign up as a consultant, I mean, you're not going to make money off of someone who doesn't, who signs up and doesn't purchase anything, but you do make money off of people when they sign up as a consultant and purchase products, which you're told to, cause you want to be a product to the products. So yeah, you do. Uh, but of course they're probably saying that so that they don't look like a pyramid scheme, but we do know they're a product based pyramid scheme. The FTC says so. The first thing, be your own boss with low startup costs. You are not your own boss. Oh my gosh. Earn commission from products you sell. All right. Run a business from your smartphone. You don't own a business and you're not running a business. You're, you're a salesperson. Build a team of independent consultants who do the same. Yeah, that's like their main goal is to build a team, in my opinion, with my experience. Uh, they talk about never stop recruiting. So you make money off of commissions, you know, when people uh, prefer clients or clients purchase products. Overrides your earnings from product sales by your team, so you make money off of your team. And awards, additional awards offered at every level based on your team sales performance. Bonuses, that's what it is, it's bonuses. Let's look at their income disclosure statement. You start as an independent consultant and you can rank up to district manager, area manager, regional vice president, and national vice president. So there are four levels. District manager, that is 33% of the company. These people make on average $2,299 a year. The median is more accurate, which is 1,769. That's 33%. But that's the first rank. You start as an independent consultant, which is 56%. So we are at 89% of the entirety of distributors. Uh, and the average annual earning for them is $206. The 30 days healthy living, which is what you want to purchase as you enter Arbonne is over $300. So 89% of people are likely not profiting and you are pushed to purchase products as a consultant, in my opinion, and in my experience. The second one are area managers, and they make $13,785 on average a year, uh, which these are so generous. <laughs> the median is 12,037, and they are 8% of the company at this point. 
Regional vice presidents, top 2% of the company. This is what I qualify for. The average they make a year is 62,711. 62, and the median, which is the most accurate, is 58,719. Top 2%. Top 1%. The average annual earnings are $253,607 and the median is $173,677. Again, this is all before taxes, which fuck you up because anything you do, whether it's um, go on a trip, get rewards, whatever it is, they you pay taxes on all of that, <laughs> all of it. We know that 89% of the company is making less than $2,000 a year which is terrible. And you're not your own boss. I cannot believe she keeps saying that. Stay up late and share this. And you know what? It is going to be some sacrifice. I have definitely sacrificed. I, I feel like there was a few years in there that I almost felt like I was missing out on something. Um, it's like I had everything that I wanted, but I almost felt like I was missing out on something but actually I was learning one of the most valuable lessons like I was putting in the work I was building my business from the ground up I was the one showing up so I'm the one to fall back on because if you're the boss there's nobody that you can run to and say you know what I I'm gonna take this I'm gonna take this week off I'm not gonna show up for my business I'm not really feeling it so um and we'll get into that I know that the title of this and what you all showed up for is discipline over motivation and I'm gonna get to that and this is my absolute favorite thing to talk about so um, so bear with me. So my nation is called gratitude nation. Gratitude is absolutely my favorite word. I feel like it has, when I learned what being grateful was going to do, um, in my life and in my business, like the wake up and say, I am so grateful for all these things that I have and go to bed and think of all these things that I'm grateful that I have. I start my day and I end every single day that way. And I, highly recommend you do the same. So I heard a quote one time and it was, what if you woke up tomorrow and you only had the things that you were grateful for today? That, I have a few quotes that have truly like touched me, changed my life. That's one of them. It almost makes me want to cry. I think I'm, I'm, I still have like postpartum hormones, honestly, I think like I could just start crying. So I just, so I, I feel like when I, when I lay down, instead of counting up my troubles from the day, like, cause a lot of us, you know, we, we want to, we want to lay down and we want to overthink things. I'm sitting there. I'm thinking, these are the things that I'm grateful for. These are the things that I'm fighting for. These are the things that I'm working for. These are the things that I'm getting up early, that I'm staying up late. And these are the things that I'm going to miss out on things that are not as important so that I can build my business from the ground up. And I can step back and look at that however many years later and say, I built that and I did that and I have worked hard to get to where I am. There's this narrative that the top one and 2% work harder than everyone else, which we know is not true. They don't work harder than everyone else. So the issue is there are 98% of people who work as hard and harder than she's worked, miss out on a lot of stuff. They will never make it, but they're told they will if they work hard and put in the effort it's horrifying for them. They're going to miss so much that they're never going to get back and they're not going to make it to the top one or 2%, even though they've worked just as hard as them. I've had people in my downline who've worked just as hard as me, but they didn't have the opportunity to go anywhere with it. They were not able to do it. And that's how the majority of it is. It's a very sad narrative when when they say you're going to have years of your life that you're going to miss, but it's going to be totally worth it. When in reality, for 98% of people, it's not totally worth it. And you lose a lot of money in my experience. You are one of those people. And it's okay if you are, you don't have to like raise your hand or anything because we've all done it. If you're one of those people who you wake up and you're like, I'm not feeling so motivated today. Motivation or I mean, that has to be my least favorite word. I, I do not run off motivation. Um, I don't want my phone going off y'all, sorry. So if I decided every single day that I was only going to work on the days that I felt most motivated, I would not have one tenth of the things that I have today. I, I can't imagine where I would be. There have been so many times that I have had to go in and maybe you're not 
happy about that exact thing or you're not happy about how that day turned out, whatever that is, if you are relying solely on motivation, it's kind of like, have any of you ever gotten on Pinterest when you were like motivated to redo a room or to work out or to whatever it may be, you're super motivated, you're all fired up, you can't wait to go, you're gonna change the world, you're gonna do this, you're gonna do that, and then like three days later, so you ran a few miles and you're like, hey, oh, okay, like that was that was fun, but um, I'm lost interest. So you fizz out, you've, you've lost interest, your fire is not there, you need to you need to look back at your your 20 reasons why you know and you need to look back at those things that you're grateful for and you say this is why this is what i'm getting up for this is why i'm choosing to be disciplined over motivation because if you show up if you're going to be disciplined enough to show up every day that discipline is what is going to keep your business and your life strong even when all of the motivation i think this is actually a good thing i think discipline is more important than motivation and I agree to a certain extent. When it comes to MLMs, it does not work in the same way as it does with working out or eating better or reading more books or doing whatever, um, tidying up, like making these habits based off discipline and not motivation. I, I see that. But with MLMs, that's it's not the same thing because only 2% have the opportunity to make a living wage and 1% have the opportunity to really make more than that and be comfortable. It, you can't put this situation in with what you're doing in MLMs because it's not a situation where everyone can win. Everyone, if, if you wanted to make a habit that wasn't based off of someone else's downline, <laughs> you could do it. Like if I wanted to work out, if I wanted to make it a habit to work out every day, which I don't actually think is good to work out every single day, but um, make a habit to read a book every day, like read a section of a book every day. That's a good example. That's fine. Not when it comes to the statistics showing that you will not, <laughs> literally won't literally 98% won't and can't because the business model is built that way. I feel like, you know, when some of, when we do our um, affirmations in the morning and at night, what are you telling yourself? Are you saying, you know, I'm, I want this, but when it's convenient for me, or I want this when it feels right. I want this when I don't have as much on my plate throw throw motivation and throw all of that just absolutely out the window because to build a strong business and to be to be the boss and to be the person who is in charge who is running your business running your life you're gonna have to decide to show up every single day when i first started arbonne um it was it was in the very beginning of my business i wanted to be an area manager i think more than i wanted to breathe air I saw a quote and I, it may still be up on my Instagram, but it said, just keep showing up when most people quit. That was another quote for me that in to some, it may not, it, it may not speak to you in the exact same way to me. It's like, wow, I'm going to make it. I'm going to be there. If I just keep showing up every day, I can't remember what book this is from. And I, I just thought of this, but is it, Maybe it's leadership. I can't remember, but um, whatever book this is, it says something about the getting the one percent better every single day, and at the end of the year, that's three hundred and sixty-five percent better. Like, did that not just like, wow? Like, okay, when I read that, whatever book that was in, I was like, you're kidding me. So, Sly Edge. Okay, yeah, that was it. Yes. Okay, thank you, because I like couldn't remember. I heard it. Um, that that was like it's such a moment for me. I'm like, oh my gosh even if I did that one little thing. So I think a lot of times in our businesses or whatever we're doing. When she said, I wanted to be an area manager more than I could breathe, that is exactly the energy they want you to have. That is exactly what they try to teach you. You want it more than you can breathe, essentially. I wrecked my mental health trying to reach I mean, I did it so quickly too. I just, boom, district manager. And then it took me a little longer to get to area manager and then qualified for regional vice president all within a year, which is not normal. And I 
was fucking exhausted. My mental health was destroyed. I wanted it more than I could breathe. And by the end of it, I couldn't catch my fucking breath. I couldn't breathe. I felt like I was drowning. I'd lost so many people that I loved. I was exhausted all the time. I saw everyone as someone who could make me money. Everything just seemed so transactional. And soon I'm going to sit down and really go through why I left the MLM and tell my story a little bit more. My very first video is about it, but I think I could do a better job of it now. So I'm going to do that soon. But that is the mindset that they want you to have. And it is so awful, so toxic, so disgusting. And it's because if you have that mindset, you will be able to make them money. We're thinking okay, I didn't do all of the things on my list today. And so then you decide to not show up the next day because you're like, well, I didn't, I didn't get to everything. So I'm going to take a little break or whatever. Don't let your head hit the pillow until you've done something for your business every single day. That will help you stay disciplined. Even if it was this small, if you're about to go to bed, you can do something for your business. If you haven't done anything all day long. No days off. Time freedom, my ass. Do something every day for your business, even if it's something little. No days off. You are constantly thinking about your business. Constantly. And it is so overwhelming. Could you imagine? Could you imagine constantly thinking about something like a job 24-7, right? That you feel like, oh, I should be working on it right now. Oh, I should be working on it right now. Every single day for a year, at least. I mean completely exhausting. I don't know how else to say it. I, I was just by the end of the day, there was never a moment I wasn't exhausted. To have the mindset of you need to be thinking about it all day, every day, do something for it every day. There's never a vacation. There's never a moment you can step away. There's never a moment you're fully present, at least for me, with your family and your friends. I was always little here, little there. Do that 1% so that at the end of the year, you can be 365% better. Now, imagine if you gave more effort than 1% every single day. Imagine if you gave your all every single day. Can you imagine where you would be in one full year? That time is going to pass anyways. So if you are able to be your own boss, but you decide that you do every other day, you're going to be half as good. If you decide you're going to do, you're going to be there and show up just that 1%, you know, it's going to add up. But the thing is, if you decide you want this, decide how bad you want this, decide where you want to be. So essentially, it's a little bit of a guilt trip now. Like, yeah, you can do the 1% that we're telling you is going to change your life. But you should probably do more. If you only work half, what you say, like every other day, you're only going to be half as good as you could be. Jeez. Oh my gosh. What the hell? What the hell? That's not how that works, ma'am. In your business and show up that much. Do you want 100% out of this business? Do you want to, where do you want, where do you see yourself in the company? Where do you see yourself in one year? Where do you see yourself in five years? Because all of that time is going to pass anyways. Are you going to let your head hit the pillow every night doing the bare minimum? Or are you going to do what, what you deserve? Go put in you know, go put in the effort that you want to get out of this business, because I do know that hard work will pay off. And it does. And when you sit there and you hard work, it does pay off, not necessarily in an MLM, though. Again, it's the business model and how the business model is made. If everyone could become 1%, there wouldn't be a 1%. Manifest these things. And you're saying, you know, I'm showing up, I'm doing well, I'm I am succeeding in everything that I'm wanting to do. The way you talk to yourself, that happens. That's real. Like that's, that becomes your reality. If you're looking in the mirror and you're saying, wow, I've got it. I did, I did work today. I showed up. I'm the boss and I showed up and I did not quit. Even if, it, if it's all you had was 10 minutes for your business, that's 10 minutes more, you know? So um, that's the way I look at it. My husband is a police officer. He may be on night shift. He may be on evening shift. He may be on morning shift. Um, he gets two days off and I am so fortunate that I'm able to work, you know, 
from home and be able to stay at home with my beautiful, beautiful babies. That has always been my dream, honestly, to kind of be a stay at home mom, but like a stay at home, work from home mom. So for me, I don't have that luxury of like a scheduled, and I say luxury for a reason, luxury of like a scheduled work day, right? So a lot of us, we do best if it's, you know, we have like, okay, I'm gonna do 30 minutes of work here, 30 minutes work here. For me, that I, I don't have, I don't schedule that out, and so I just do it whenever I get a chance because my days don't look the same. Like I said, I have a four-year-old, a three-month-old, and a husband who works really crazy hours and another business. My busy may not be half of what yours is. Well, I'm not comparing busy. We're all busy, right? You need to make that decision that when you have that extra time, instead of watching The Bachelor, and I love The Bachelor, okay? Like I do, I have watched it. Like I I watch TV pretty, I mean, not very often. Like I, because that is valuable time that I can be working my business. I don't want to go to bed and my head hit the pillow and be like, wow, that 45 minutes that I watched that, I definitely could have been working. She almost said she watches TV all the time, but then she was like, wait, I can't say that on here because we're supposed to be an example. So she gets to the point here of cut out things you enjoy, you know, don't watch The Bachelor with your friends. I get it. Like, I get that, you know, don't consume your time with just TV. Why not? If you want to, if that makes you happy, who the fuck cares? Don't make people feel guilty about it. Also, those kind of things like The Bachelor and like, when Riley and I like watch an episode of something together, like we start a new TV show, that's time together that we are spending and laughing and crying sometimes and just enjoying each other's presence. And that's taken away from them. And now the business is first. We are not only doing this for ourselves, whether you have a family, whether you have a future family or whether you're here to change someone else's life. I can't imagine how many lives have been changed because of my yes people that I don't even know, but that have been inspired by something that have completely changed their life. I wonder if you've ever tried to imagine, Nicole, how many lives that you've hurt because of your yes and how many people have lost money because of your yes. I can guarantee you, looking at the income disclosure statement, it's a little more than how many you've helped. Because it's opportunity. So every time you take a day off and every time you decide not to put in even that 1%, that's not just your life that's someone else's life you are impacting someone else's life so be sure to show up not just for you but for everyone so um i feel like when back to this is back to my other business and i like i feel like they're so tied together because i always heard the same thing in the beginning of me opening up my store and it was, you know, must be nice or, oh, I'm definitely going to do that too. Or once you, you get somewhere where you have something nice and someone's like, you know, oh, you got so lucky. So I do not like the word lucky either. But it is luck and it is privilege. I mean, that's, but that's the truth. It is based on luck and it is based on privilege. You said that your entire family had your back the whole time and helped you and made it possible for you to do that. That's not the normal. That is privileged. I don't like motivation and I don't like lucky. So just, I don't like those. That is hard work. That is discipline. That is sh you showing up on a Sunday. She probably fucking hates the word privilege then. <laughs> she probably fucking hates it. You know, do y'all you, you show up on Sunday or is that your, do you take that day off? Because... I don't know what day. I think it is Sunday. I don't really know. So y'all are showing up on Sunday. I don't ever know what day it is. It's all the same to me. Like I just, you know, just kind of do as much as I can in the, the times that I can. So for me, when someone's like, oh, that must be nice. I'm like, well, you know what it is, but you know, I like, it's nice, but I'm, I'm showing up. Like I, I'm, I'm putting the work in, like, this doesn't just, this doesn't just happen. So <laughs> when someone says, oh, you got lucky, well, did you luck out and you decided to get up out of the bed because your head hit the pillow and you hadn't done anything? Did you get lucky and go into your office and go to work for 30, 45 minutes when the kids were asleep, when you could have been watching TV? That's not luck. So that's discipline. Uh, mm, she might have some discipline. Sure. But no, it is luck too, because... 1% of people making it to national vice president, which is what you are, that is luck. It's not just 
hard work or discipline. You make that decision to be disciplined. You make the decision whether or not you're going to show up. Um, I talked about thinking, think about the people who need you that you don't even know yet. I don't know how many people are in my success line since my yes on June 11th, 2018, I became an ARPON independent consultant. I didn't have a clue the magnitude like uh, of my yes. All I was thinking about was myself, to be completely honest. When I signed up, I thought I, I'm i starting an Arbonne business. I'm an Arbonne independent consultant. And I felt on top of the world. I could not wait. And when I went. Another thing to think about is they're also told stuff like this all the time. You are changing lives. You are making a huge impact by doing this. Everyone should will be blessed and honored to work with you. Like any everyone's going to be blessed by this business if they do the work they're supposed to do. That's what they're being told all the time. So a lot of people, and hear me out, a lot of people actually think they're doing good. And that's why it is not about the people. But the top leaders are the ones who benefit from the downlines. They're the ones who benefit from people's failures. And I'm going to continue to use them and their trainings as an example of what it looks like to manipulate, be brainwashed, brainwash others. Of course, it's my opinion that that's what they're doing, but I'm going to use that as, as an example. I have to, because I can't just say, oh, they are manipulative. Oh, they are love bombing. Oh, they are doing this, they are doing that. I can't just say it, I need to show it too. It's like research paper. You can't just say, oh, I found this out about my topic. Okay, where's the proof? How am I supposed to believe you? You have to show it. I truly was on top of the world, but I was thinking about me. It took that, it, I, was, I was motivated, you know, I had just started, like I had, like I had said in the beginning of this call, that runs out like that, you know, the, you know, that fire that you have the first month of your business or the first day, you're like, oh my gosh, okay, here's all these products. I'm going to go take a picture. This is going to be, this is going to be so cute. I'm going to be posting on Instagram all the time. Like that, I mean, that's kind of like, oh, I cannot wait to tell everybody. I wanted to go door to door. I literally wanted to go door to door. I wanted to call everybody I know. And if you're on this car, call and I called you, you know that I was not going to get off the call until you joined me. And I'm so serious. I would just walk up to anyone and everyone was so excited. You weren't going to get off the call until they joined you? Oh, I'm sorry. What? Uh, you didn't give them an option? And you said, I'm so serious. Dude, you pushed, you pushed people into joining this business. You forced them into it. If you said you were just kidding or something okay but you literally said and i'm so serious dude come on home girl just kidding you're not my home girl let's think about this for a moment that is not okay that's harassment especially if you bother them over and over again about it i have a feeling that people who didn't want to join her business or people who don't agree with her in the business she won't be friends with them it's based on whether they are supportive in her business or not supportive. And that's how it was for me too, which is sad to say, but it's true. They give you this thought of if people aren't supporting you, they shouldn't be in your life. If they don't support you, then why are they in your life? It's sad, but it's true. A few weeks later, I was like, oh, dang, I'm worn out. Like I would be sitting in my car, which is my office. If you have kids, you probably know that. Um, I would pull into the garage and I would work. Like if Lily fell asleep, I would work. That was getting to be kind of tough. Like I was working in the driveway and you know, wherever I could go. Like I was just trying to squeeze in 10 minutes. Well, that you're, you're gonna get tired. You're going to say, oh my gosh, like I'm burning out a little bit. That's when the motivation has worn off. That's when discipline comes in. So I don't know where, you know, there's a lot of people on this call. I don't know where you are in your business. But for me, when I 
was like, oh, I want, I want more than this. I don't just want to become a district manager or an area manager. I'm ready to be a regional vice president and I'm ready to be a national vice president. So do you know that other, that quote that's like, don't dress for the job that you have dress for the job that you want. That's another really good one. And that may seem really silly to y'all, but so I don't know what the like equivalent of that would be in our bond, but like, don't post content and share your story with people for the title that you have do that for the title that you want you start acting like a national vice president if that's where you want to be so when i was working in my car and i was like wow do you think jesse lee lives by this because i think she does i think she says i'm the number one network mark in the world because she's trying to like manifest it but it's turned into a lie like it's an actual lie that she's saying it's not true she's not the number one network marketer in the world uh, there's no facts. Nothing has said that. And it's actually only showed that there's facts showing that she's not. <laughs> so what? I think she's saying it so that one day if she ever becomes it, which she won't because her numbers are so small now compared to what they used to be like a year ago, um, that she can be like, see, I told y'all I was. Here's the facts. It's like, you're not right now. I mean, manifest it, sure. But you can't just go around saying it. That's like me going around saying, I'm the number one anti-MLM YouTuber. Uh, no. <laughs> I'm not. And my goal is not ever to be the number one anti-MLM YouTuber or anything like that, or the number one anti-scam YouTuber. Um, but that is the same equivalent. That's like me going around saying that and we're all like, um, no. Am I manifesting it? No, it's a fucking lie. <laughs> You're gonna get worn out when you are a national vice president. It's time to level up. So if you wanna level up in your business, you're going to have to be the person. You're going to have to be a boss. Like, I'm not very nice. As a Let's level up our exhaustion. That's pretty much all I heard. A boss, to be completely honest. Like, I feel I'm nice in some ways, but in another way, I'm like, this is the way that I want it done. And as long as it's done the, the way that I want, everything's good. Well, if you're your boss, look at yourself in the mirror and just say, okay, this is the way that I want it done. And as long as it's done this way, we're going to be good. If it's not, hey, sis, like, you have a job to do. Like, you know call yourself out like this is we are we are the marketing team we are the content team the everything team you are in charge of your own business it is so amazing it is such a luxury but it is also something that we're gonna have to take seriously so I feel like you are not your own boss Nicole stop I'm getting hot because I wore this sweater and I feel like I'm getting bossy and I feel like I'm probably being like really aggressive so i'm i'm not trying to scare y'all or anything this is just how i talk but it is so important to me i feel so see y'all laughing so i feel so passionate about this like i can't say this on the call because cecilia like wouldn't approve so i won't say the whole thing but y'all will know what i'm talking about you know don't halfway do anything like use all of you to do it. Y'all know what I'm saying? So be all in. I, I speak about that a lot. I feel like I train my team on that. If you're, if you are on my team, you know that that's like one of my favorite things to say is just be all in. Don't be halfway in. Don't go over to the door, you know, the Arbonne business door <laughs> and then be like, well, it's not convenient for me tomorrow because I have plans and then you're back in and then you're back out. But wait, isn't this supposed to be like lucrative because I'm told you can work it into the little nooks and crannies of your day. So why the fuck can't I, can't I take my toe back out from the door? People in MLM say like, this is supposed to be something you can do in the nooks and crannies of your life. Like I'm told that over and over in Arbonne, but no. Nope. Just kidding, you're in now, it's not. You need to be doing it every day, thinking about it every day and doing something for it every single day. Like, what the heck? <laughs> so interesting to watch this now. Cause I haven't watched all of this. Um, I watched like the first two minutes and then I blind reacted here. Um, this is nuts. I used to be like, yeah, yeah, Nicole. Nicole is not a nice person. I know that because I've had a run in with her. She's not, in my opinion. That's not what the boss does. Decide that you are going to be, you're the one who, you're the one who is going to have to be like making check marks by your own name. So I feel like y'all are probably like, oh, she's, wow, she's, she's a little bit crazy. 
maybe I am, but, um, so with, with all of this, like I keep thinking of other things that I want to say that kind of go off of the whole motivation discipline thing. And I, I like with gratitude and stuff like that. So I, I want to close this by saying, whenever you wake up and you're going to think about me, cause you're going to say like, Oh gosh, like I feel like <laughs> Nicole was so mean on that call and she's, <laughs> she's going to like freak out. Here's the thing when you wake up and when you go to bed and you make your list or you, I, sometimes I'll like actually like go through like each finger and like add up all the things that I'm grateful for. When you're thinking about that, when, when your business gets hard, when you get somewhere, when you're at a day where you have a million things going on and you're like, Oh my gosh, I'm putting this on the back burner. Stop and think about those things that you're grateful for. Stop and think about what an incredible opportunity that it is that we are able to do this and that you are able to work from your car or wherever it is that you are. So stop and say like, I'm grateful for this. I'm grateful for my busy. That's what I hear that a lot too. They'll be like, are you, wow, you must be busy or wow, you have your hands. In Arbonne, they do a lot, and I've noticed this, a lot of thought stopping techniques, like stop and think about how happy you are. Like they wanna stop your thoughts about how it could be negative and they want you to just go, oh, positive. Like it's not necessarily like thought stopping in the sense of not having a thought, it's thought stopping in the sense of having a logical thought. Thank God I do. I am so incredibly grateful to have so much on my plate. I don't want a little bit on my plate. I want a full plate. I want, you know, every, like I know y'all do too. We don't want to be bored. Let's keep it interesting. So we, when you're looking at all the things that you have on your to-do list, which sometimes that can be overwhelming, stop, take a deep breath and say, no, I'm grateful for this. I'm grateful for this plate. I am, I'm so grateful that I'm the one who tells me that it's okay that I did this today and this tomorrow, but I'm doing something for my business every single day. So, um, those are my tips. That is how I run my business. I'm like, I feel like I'm hundred percent true to me. I hope that something interesting that I've noticed and please comment below. I want to hear your commentary and I want to know what you think as they use quote, I mean, of course they use buzzwords, but they use quotes and they use things that you go. Yeah. Like that's, that's good. That's a good way to think about it, but they use it in the MLM setting and it doesn't work the same. Like that happens all the time with MLMs. They say some things and you're like, that's a damn good quote. Or that's like a, that's a great mindset, you know, like that's a great this, that's a great that, but it doesn't work in the scheme of things when it comes to MLM and the business model. I, I feel like that's a big part of it and that's why people are so easily drawn into it and so easily fooled is because they hear something and they're like, well, yeah, like that would be a good thing. Being more positive, being more happy, being more this, but in reality, like that's not actually what's happening. They're being more exhausted. They're getting more tired. I just... I've noticed that a lot and I think we need to have conversations about it. So let me know maybe what you've heard before that you go, this is good or this could be good, but with MLMs, here's why it's not. I, I want to hear what you have to say. That y'all can, that y'all felt that and you got that out of this. So I hope that all of your businesses are doing amazing and that you all say super disciplined and that I'm not super scary, but that you think about me when your head's hitting the pillow and you're like, okay, I gotta get up and I gotta do my stuff. So, okay, that's it. That's everything that I have for y'all tonight. Thank you all so much for getting on here and letting me share with you. And I will see y'all later. That is a Skill Sunday training. And watching it, I go, wow, that is not as blatantly manipulative as maybe like Jesse Lee it's it's a soft manipulation which sounds probably super weird and i totally just made that up it's like a gentle push to have a mindset that they want you to have in mlms and the mindset is not good for the majority of people it's interesting watching this and going red fucking flag red fucking flag everywhere red flags everywhere you know ooh why are you off? <laughs> it makes me so sad. I need to plug it back in. Because when I used to watch this, I would go, incredible, incredible training. But now that I'm educated, now that I've stepped out of that echo chamber, things are different. 
I guess something that's important is be patient with your people that are in MLMs and that are struggling because they might be told you are changing lives. They could be in faith manipulation territory where they're saying God has you here for a reason. It's all about, you know, being patient and making sure that you're educated. So thank you so much if you watched this far. I really appreciate it. Leave a commentary below. Uh, feel free to join my membership if you'd like and follow me on social media. I am going to go take a nap because I am tired as frick. Finals week is coming up. Go for me. Uh, so yeah, I hope that you'll have the most amazing morning, afternoon, evening, night, wherever you are in the world and wherever you're watching this. What? What's my saying? Wherever you are and whatever you're, oh my God, I can't remember. Well, I'll just see you next time. <laughs> I'm tired. Okay, bye.